Good evening everybody and welcome back to the Scottish Football Pundit Podcast live on YouTube. This evening it is a 20th, Tuesday the 25th of August 2020. Me being myself, Connor Kilter and you guys being your set of the fellow viewers and subscribers of the channel. This evening on live on the channel we are talking about the transfer news of today around the Scottish Premiership and the Scottish Championship regarding some of the players um, and yeah we'll be talking about the future of Alfredo Morelos at Rangers we'll be talking about Aaron Hickey on the rumours of Bologna and Bayern Munich also live tonight we'll be talking about the Hearts centre back position as John Suter is supposed to be out injured with his Achilles again and also on the channel tonight we will be talking about Celtic and Shane Duffy also, and also points of Motherwell youngster and Scottish under 21 international David Turnbull. So we'll start off with David Turnbull. David Turnbull was doing well at Motherwell for the last couple of seasons under Stephen Robinson alongside fellow winger Jake Casty, who is who signed for Rangers and has since then been loaned back to Motherwell. Um, also, he was playing alongside um, Motherwell central defensive midfielder Alan Campbell. The three of them, the three of them were playing superb at Motherwell for the last couple of seasons until Jake Casey left at, at the end of the 2018-2019 season and went to Rangers on a permanent deal. Um, also. Um, Celtic were looking at signing J- um, David Turnbull as a permanent deal but the deal broke through due to David, David Turnbull getting a knee injury on and failing his medical at the beginning of last season. David Turnbull was out for about, I think he was out for six months or something like that at, to the beginning of um, last season and he has just came back from his injury and was training now. He's been getting first team minutes again at Motherwell and f- been five games into the season now. Of the 2020-2021 Ladbrokes Premiership season, he's t- the top performer at Motherwell again this season and I don't know if Motherwell can afford to lose him and if Stephen Robinson who Stephen Robinson would get in as a replacement for David Turnbull if Motherwell were to sell him to whether it's Celtic or a team down south he's been linked with Celtic also he's been linked with a few teams down south that I've been reading on the transfer news over the last couple of days um, he is a good player He's young as well, he's fast, he's a good midfielder, he, w- he is going to be a future Scottish international in the Scotland team and I think he'll make it. Personally for me, I wouldn't want to see him going to Celtic, I know he is a Celtic fan, he's a Celtic boyhood fan as well as fellow Scot- Scotsman and doing well for himself now down at Arsenal, Kieran Tierney who was from Wishaw. Um, David Turnbull has had several Celtic scouts at the Motherwell games in pre-season and at the start of this season monitor- and monitoring the Scottish the Scottish youngster and yeah I would prefer I would prefer David to take the move down south rather than 
taken a move to Celtic. I don't think they ever get game time with Celtic personally. He is a good player, but Celtic have got the likes, have got a fantastic midfield set up just now. No, so Scottish international Ryan Christie, Scott Brown, their captain, another Scottish international Callum McGregor, another Scottish international James Forrest, um, El Yanousi. They've also they've also got Tom Rogic, who is linked to leave the club. They've got they've got a fantastic strike. They've got a fantastic squad there at the moment, and then, to be honest with you, I don't know where. David Turnbull would fit in at Celtic. Whether whether he does go to Celtic or not, that's his choice and that's Motherwell's choice to sell him. Um, but personally for me, I wouldn't want to see David Turnbull leave Motherwell to go to Celtic at the moment. I would prefer to see him stay at Motherwell and get himself more first team game, first team action to develop him as a player and to develop his transfer market budget and like to make increase his value. Also I think if he was to have a transfer from Motherwell he would be better off to go down south to a Scot to a English League One team or an English Championship side where he would be used where we probably get f more first team action whether down i think if we get more first team action down in england and get more of a chance down there also i think that's where they would continue to develop as a player as you've seen sorry guys also as you've seen over the last couple of years of scottish youngsters leaving the scottish game to go south of the border on the likes of for, um, Scotland captain and Liverpool left back Andy Robertson, you have know, also seen Scottish international left back and Arsenal left back Kieran Tierney leave to go down to Arsenal. You've seen Billy Gilmer, Scottish under 21, leave Scotland and leave Rangers to sing for Chelsea. You've seen you've seen a few a few Scottish young young Scottish players leave the Scottish game to go south of the border because it is, it's a better game, they've got a better chance than in England, they've got a better chance to improve their career, they've got a better chance to develop themselves as a player and to make something of their career. I think that that's, if David Turnbull is to leave Motherwell this season, in my opinion, if it was David Turnbull, his best option would be to get a move down to England or stay with Motherwell for another season and develop himself a bit more. I don't think the move to go to Celtic is right for him at the moment and I don't think that he would fit in and get game time at Celtic. Also, I don't think that he would leave Motherwell unless Motherwell get the right price for him because to be honest with you, I could see Motherwell selling him for about Two and a half million to three million. That's what I think it is worth at the moment. That's what I think that his value is worth. Whether Mother will get that from him, I don't know. But I think that's what Mother will should get from him and shouldn't sell David Turnbull to Celtic or down south for less to get between two and a half and three million pounds. As that is a good transfer budget for Mother will to go out into the transfer market and get about get a get a replacement to fit into the space of where David Turnbull was playing at Motherwell and to work to bolster their squad a bit more and pro to progress in for this season. That's enough on David Turnbull situation, guys. I'm also read today that. Um, St. Murray, St. Murray and Jim Goodwin has signed a Irish winger on, on a free transfer from English League One side AFC Wimbledon. They have signed. His name is. Oh, I've not got his name. 
Um, they've signed they signed a fellow Irish winger from AFC Wimbledon on a free transfer and he's played for Bray Wanderers, he's played for Dundalk and another few teams back back over in Ireland. Um that's an that's a good addition to Jim Goodwin's side and another good signing for St Mirren to help them to get where they want to finish the season. As I've read and heard about St Mirren and their chairman and Jim Goodwin's plans for the season is to at least get a top six finish and the squad that they've got already this season is the best St Mirren squad that I've seen over the last couple of years. They've got the likes of fellow Ex Rangers goalkeeper Jack Angert. They've signed former Aberdeen St. Jo St. Johnston centre back Joe Shaughnessy. They've also they've got Junior Marius and Jonathan Obika playing up front. That's two crucial players for them. They've also they've got um, a good a good team that for the season they've signed Richard Tate from Motherwell Hill. And I think that that's the best, the best Saint Mirren team that I've seen. That's it, seen Saint Mirren over since they went down the first time, and since the since they won the Scottish League Cup in two thousand thirteen or two thousand and fourteen when they beat Hearts at Hamden in the final. Um, yeah. So yeah, the next one I want to move on to is another Scottish youngster. Who's been linked with a few clubs over the summer transfer window? He's tremendous. He's only some seventeen or eighteen years of age. Age for me. He's from. He's a Glaswegian born boy. I, sh I think he's a Celtic fan. Um, and fantastic player. He's got to be a fantastic player for Scotland in the future and years to come. I'm not super. I'm, if we didn't have Tierney and Robertson, he would be in the Scotland squad by now. He's done tremendous at Hearts over the last couple of seasons under Craig Levine and Daniel Stendhal. And um, since he got the chance to play at left back for Hearts, he's done tremendous. He's young, he's, young. he's got the pace, he's got the power, he's got the clinical. He's got everything you want to look at for a Scottish left back and I think that he's going to go far in his career. He's going to be another Andy Robertson, Kieran Tierney of Scotland and that is youngster Aaron Hickey. Aaron Hickey, tremendous boy. I know I'm a Rangers fan but I've go to a few Hearts games and I've met, I've met Aaron myself personally and he's a cracking boy. A funny guy, he's, 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 his performance is absolute second to none, absolutely excellent. His attitude towards playing football and towards fans and the club is absolutely second to none. He's done everything correct in his career, training brilliantly, doing everything that he needs to do, training constantly, not, not getting himself into any trouble, ball or nothing like that. Um, I think that he's got to go far in his career. He's been linked with three clubs as I've seen over the summer transfer window so far. He was linked with going to Celtic. He's been linked with an Italian side, Bologna, and he's also been a he's been um, linked with German giants Bayern Munich, who've just won the Champions League against PSG the other night there, um, and. To be honest, I think that he is going to get a big move like that, but I think that he's better off to, to stay where he is for another year, at least, and get ch like championship football to, I know it sounds daft guys, yeah, but like, I think that the championship of level of Scotland would be good for Aaron Hickey to play in for a season to develop him as a player. and. To give him a little bit more experience and to strengthen him up a little bit for 
to take the next step to a bigger side next season on the likes of we could go to Rangers Celtic or if you take the move down south or go to abroad to a team around Europe that's up to him but I think that his best option would be to stay at Hearts for the season coming up and to develop him as a player and to get more first team experience and to help him out as a player in my opinion he's got good players around him at Hearts he's got the likes of experience in Scottish International Stephen Naismith Liam Boyce, Jamie Walker and Bobby Zomal, Craig Gordon. There's good there's good players in there that are in that team that are older than them that will show them in the right direct but in the right direction to make them to the be to be the best player that he can and get the the real potential out of them. And I think the right manager to get the right potential out of them and to get the best out of them this season if he stays at Hearts would be Robbie Nielsen. Robbie Nielsen's fantastic with young players, fantastic to get the best the best out of them. He got the best out of Warren Shank Warren, Lawrence Shanklin over the last couple of years when he was manager at Dundee United. Also when he was at Hearts before he got the best out of like Callum Patterson, um Sam Nicholson the players, the players like that, Bolly King stuff, um, so yeah, and <coughs> I think that the, the heart, well, I know I'm talking about Aaron Hickey, but we'll go on to the hearts just now, I think the hearts have got a good, a good team this season, and that they'll win the championship and go straight back up, they've got a good side, they've lost, they lost striker at Czech Bezu to Wickham Wanderers, They've lost Sean Clare to Oxford and also Connor Washington to Charlton. But they've got the same Craig Gordon this season, they've signed Roberts, they've, and the team that they've got just now is a good side. And I think that they're too good to be in the Championship, to be honest with you. They've still got Harry Cochran, which, which is a good player, Connor Smith, Aaron Hickey. Anthony McDonald, Stephen Naismith, Wim Boyce, all good players that are Premiership level players. Um, so yeah, and to be honest, I think this is the season that Hearts need to get the best out of two players. Harry Cochran for one, he's not he's not done it over the last couple of years for Hearts ever since he done it. He scored that goal at sixteen year old against. Um, Celtic at Tyne Castle, he's not to be able to do much for Hearts ever since. But I think this is the season that Hearts need to get get where they belong back in the Scottish Premiership and fighting for European football. They're not a Championship side. They've got they've got the players there. They've got the they've got the money there. They just need to they just need to get the right the the right owner and stuff on board. And to help the club financially is they're going wrong under and budge. And I think that the what they could manage a good manage ma management team back Team Castle that they haven't had over the last couple of years. They've got Robbie Nielsen back at the helm. Which is good which is good for Hearts as well as the Scottish Championship and Scottish Football. Also they have former Kilmarnock manager and Rangers captain. He's, he's experienced in Scottish Football. Tremendous guy and experienced good with good, good with the younger players who are ages with me. And that is big, big jig Lee McCart. What a player, what a legend man. Um, and also they have Gordon Forrest as well. And yeah, I think this is a season to come back to come back up bigger and stronger than what they were over the two years, two two three seasons under Craig Levine. Um, they got rid of Craig Levine far too late, and to be honest, Daniel Stendel could could have probably done the job for Hearts, but 
it was the wrong, it was the wrong, the wrong man at the wrong time. We should have got ready for it being long before the brown van was down the long way. It was sad. it was horrible to see the club get rid of Daniel Stendhal like that. As Daniel Stendhal began to get a heart's back to playing the way the heart play and getting the best out of the players that he had at the club. Also, I think the only the only place just now that Hearts need to look at sign look at a signing for would be the centre back position at Tyne Castle. The only the only two experienced centre backs that they have at the moment is I think he's thirty six or thirty seven year old was on loan at Dundee last season and that's former Scottish international Christoph Berra who I think is done in my opinion I don't think he's the right man to be fitted into that heart squad and he's but I think he should just retire he's no good at anywhere he's no good at pace anywhere he's no good at strength anywhere he's done also so I think the only player the only decent centre back that they've got this season in that place would be Craig Halkett brilliant player, former former Rangers youngster and Livingston's Livingston captain and that was William, William A. Craig Halkett brilliant, brilliant player and he's he'll do tremendous at Hearts we'll hopefully Hearts keep him and that he continues to do well for Hearts as that's the player that, that's the type of player that they need at the club and also they, they've got um, Chris Hamilton which is a which is a hot chunks for eighteen year old, and so yeah, they need to sign a centre back ASAP, in my opinion, and also possibly get another striker in to the club on replacement of Uche, Ekpiezu, and Connor Washington, as the first the players also the lost Sean Clare. Whether they get the replacements for these players, we need to wait and see. But to be honest, I don't think that they'll struggle in the Scottish Championship this season. I think I think it, it's not going to be a walk in the park, but I don't think they'll struggle. I think that they'll do well with, against like Inverness, Dunfermline, teams like that. That will also be fighting for promotion this season in the Scottish Championship. Also Dundee. Mm. Next one we've got to talk about is um, experienced Brighton centre back is an Irish international and that is Shane Duffy. Shane Duffy is currently up in Scotland training up in St Andrews on a pre season training camp with Brighton and Hove Albion. They are currently in Scotland training up in St Andrews doing a pre season training camp and that has been um, said in the said in the transfer news of the last couple of days as Neil Wynn and Celtic have been linked of going in a move for Brighton centre back Shane Duffy whether it happens or not we'll need to wait and see but I don't know why they're looking at signing Shane Duffy when they've got when they've got experienced centre backs already at the club and the likes of Christoph Ayer Chris, uh, Julian They've also they got the Sunderland last season, but they've got um, Frimpong right back. They've got left back Greg Taylor. They've got a, they've got a decent um, a decent defence and a decent team. I don't think they really need to sign many players this season. To be honest, I think they've got a strong enough team there which will be fighting Rangers and the on the road to get ten in a row this season. Um, so yeah, whether, whether they get 10 in a row, I don't know, we'll need to wait and see, but I think that they'll give it a shot and that, then, that this, this is the season for Steven Gerrard to try and do something with Rangers, he's not done anything over the last two seasons uh, at the club and the only real thing that he's done is progressed as in European football and as a, and kind of domestically getting second place finish last season but we for the last two seasons under Stephen Gerrard at the helm we've we started off tremendous at the first half of the season we get to the Christmas we get to the break 
then national breakover Christmas comeback from the national breakover Christmas and we're absolutely absolute fucking dog shit and to be honest this is the season if Rangers want to gain, gain 55 and to stop Celtic from getting 10 in a row they need to they need to continue to perform and no and no lose silly points like away to Livingston your command that Hamilton's it is going to be a tough season for for Rangers this season and Celtic, but they need to they need to this is their season to prove to the Scottish game and to prove to Celtic that the that, that Rangers are back and that we're not going to give up this season. We need to fight for it. It's not going to be a walk in the park for Rangers. It's not going to be a walk in the park for Celtic. And on paper right now we are the underdog. Celtic are by far the favourites to go on to win 10 in a row this season and we need to stop that from happening we've got the squad to stop that from happening we've got the money to stop that happening we've got we've got the management team to stop that from happening whether it does happen or not you've got to wait and see but under Stephen Gerrard I think that he will do the job we've got keep we've seen Kimar Ruth we've got Ryan Kent we've seen Cedric Keaton We've got Glenn Kamara, Scott Arfield, we've got, we've got a strong team there, we've still got left back, Croatian international, Borna Barisic. We've got Tavernier right back, we've got big, big rigs and goals. We've got, uh, we've got a good solid force there to, to win the league this season, to win the title and hopefully win a cup. But the only way for us to win the cup this year, to win the league title this season is to not swap up away in away games to like Dingwall and the Tana Dice, Livingston, teams like that and also win the old firms. Then they drop points in the old firms and they play well in the old firms and hopefully they lose an old firm and the way to try and win the win fifty five is Celtic of Celtic by far are the better team this year. Over the last few years, over the last nine years, Celtic have been the better team. They've got they've, they've got they've got bigger infrastructure. They've got they've got more money. They've got a they've got a good management side. They've got they've got a good 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 board. They've got fantastic players. They've they've got everything that you're looking at. A football club. They've got money as well. They've got they've got Auto and Eddie Lark and Scottish internationals. And it is going to be a hard, hard for Rangers this season. But the only, um, what I'm talking about this year, uh, at, the, at the end of the video today is we're talking about Colombian striker and Rangers number 20. That is a big man. The El Buffalo. Alfredo Morelos. I think Alfredo, is, his time's done in Glasgow, his time's up at Rangers. He doesn't seem interested at the club. He doesn't seem interested in, in anything with training with Steven Gerrard with the club to win, to win the title this season for anything. He's came back overweight for one. Two, he's interested in leaving. He's wanting more money. He's, want, he's wanting the bigger move to to we over in France or whoever wants to buy him. But we want for for us to sell him. We want at least twenty million to get rid of Alfredo, and that's what we're waiting for. I've, like I've like I've seen over the last couple of days that we are. From Rangers, a few Rangers legends and stuff that I've said to the Scottish Sun in the Daily Record, etc. That Alfredo's time's up in Glasgow. Gerrard's done with him. Gerrard's finished with him. His Rangers career's over. We've got Kimar Roof there. We've got who's who's done absolutely well since he's came in. We've got Ryan Kent, who's absolutely tremendous. Woods were wanting him. Two two bids rejected from Leeds for Ryan Kent. We've got Cedric Eaton, who's a who's a Swiss international. We also we've got a, we've got good attackers for this season and for the season ahead to do well in European and domestic 
to be honest with you, do we need it, Alfredo? I don't think so. You guys tell me what you think down below in the comment section. Like if you're new, subscribe if you're new, give me a like and this has been the Scottish Football Pundit Podcast guys. Me being, be, me being myself, Connor, you've been your, the subscribers. I'll see you in the next video, guys, and I'm out.